Hello everybody, I'm the Boss Hog and I'm bringing you my stock portfolio from March 2021 and if you're thinking that's very late then you are absolutely right. Uh, my March was super busy, uh, I'm in the process of a uh, moving job at the moment, uh, my uh, little one was ill which made us ill and I'm um, working or was working on setting up a business venture with uh, probably the guy who would be my best mate, uh, although that's still six months off at the moment and just in general March I think as well year end work etc just kind of got away from me but uh, better late than never at least uh, let's walk through my stock portfolio as of the end of March 2021 all right so let's have a look at the portfolio performance at a very high level uh, some new visuals here i suppose uh, on the left is just a super simple breakdown of what i've deposited uh, current value and uh, how the, any difference which is the profit uh, is made up uh, between stock growth so capital appreciation and dividends um, now you'll see in this table i've got a little bit of april in here as well this is actually only the first week of april uh, i just didn't save it uh, as a, at a fixed moment in time uh, so you can just kind of ignore april for now and uh, actually if you don't wait too much longer I'm going to upload April shortly after this video uh, so there's that as well uh, but actually uh, March I'm super happy with March uh, for me I felt like it was a really great month uh, I fixed a lot of the errors I'd made in uh, previous months uh, got rid of stocks that I'd either duplicated or bought too high or just didn't really understand and kind of regretted buying them uh, the Nasdaq had some wobbles basically and I was pretty cutthroat I sort of ditched things I wasn't vain about it at all you know if I was down a little bit um, and didn't really love the investment I'd make I was just ditching it uh, and you can kind of see there in my sell and buy that uh, that's a pretty big number I mean considering my portfolio is less than 50 grand uh, or just over 50 grand I suppose um, then uh, I'm basically buying and selling about 40% of my portfolio so significant changes in March um, but actually in terms of my profit uh, I had a really great dividend month although that was partly because of a special dividend um, I also had really great growth uh, so that's capital appreciation and again I think that was just where I was aggressively buying um, wobbles in Nasdaq uh, so that really helped uh, dividend definitely flattered by the Tesco special dividend there but I'm really happy uh, on the whole uh, that said I did make one uh, poor investment um, not 100% sure on the company uh, bought it before some results uh, and just mistimed it basically it's a bit of a mistake I'm still bag holding even today as in the uh, May um, but we'll see and I'll talk about that in a bit more detail uh, later um, and yeah April is off to a good start here but I won't um, get sidetracked by April okay Oh yeah, and uh, we'll go into a bit more detail on this, but I continue to comfortably outperform the FTSE All Shares Index and underperform the S&P. Uh, I'll go into detail as to why I think that is uh, shortly. Okay, so this is more high level stuff. Uh, this is my portfolio performance, uh, just basically very simple pounds, uh, looking at profit only, so not the overall um, portfolio, just the profit I've been making, uh, divided by US and UK, so uh, where, it's, where the uh, shares are held, uh, and then my total profit. So uh, the US is showing a real good improvement. Uh, you can see at one stage it was negative not too long ago. Uh, that has been helped by FX, and I would say as well, I'm trying to actively manage FX at the moment. Uh, so when the dollar gets weaker, I kind of go overweight into into dollar stocks kind of up to about 60 percent uh, and then as it gets a little bit weaker uh, I buy more pound stocks um, so not religiously doing it but you know one percent here two percent there kind of adds up and again that's something that I've been um, interested in I think kind of doing okay kind of not perfect but uh, quite happy with my FX um, performance definitely though in general uh, things moved in the right direction so that helped uh, the UK was a bit more steady um, I did ditch uh, a few recovery stocks if I think about sort of airlines pub chains uh, I just felt like that things had run up a reasonable amount and that basically the share price had only baked in good news uh, and that's always dangerous to me uh, so I decided to kind of crystallize some profits and you know like 20% to 40% profits uh, and then redirect it into a couple of what I think are real quality um, consumer discretionary spends uh, so again we'll touch on what specifically they are uh, and um, yeah really happy with that to be honest with you I, th I think it was the right call uh, you know if it turns out that EasyJet for example balloons in the future it just happens right I'm not going to beat myself up too much about it uh, but yeah the UK performance is definitely calmer and uh, than the US one but both of them are moving in the right direction so that feels good 
Okay, so I continue to outperform the uh, the FTSE All Shares Tracker and underperform the S&P 500. Uh, my theories on this is that basically it's a combination of local knowledge, uh, the stocks I've got, uh, and actually I made a lot more mistakes uh, with US stocks, uh, kind of just buying every recommendation I heard on YouTube. Uh, not always wise, by the way, definitely do your own due diligence. Uh, just made more mistakes, and so I'm kind of lagging behind, and honestly I expect it to be a little while uh, if I, indeed I manage to take over the... Uh, the S&P 500 at all uh, this year so we're at six months into my trading year at the moment uh, so we'll just have to wait and see uh, I would say both the FTSE and the S&P are, are on fire uh, the S&P feels really expensive in general uh, the FTSE is cheaper uh, but a lot of people have now uh, cycled into it and realized that actually there's some good bargains there and some good companies so uh, it's picked up quite a lot recently uh, FX uh, impact is much improved as I touched on uh, it was 900 uh, pounds adverse last month. Uh, now it's less than 100. Uh, again, I have been trying to actively manage that. Um, we'll see uh, how that moves in the future. Uh, my worst performer is an American share, GAN. Uh, I basically bought it at the wrong time. You know, I felt like I did my research. I kind of like the uh, the business, uh, or at least the um, the aim of the business. Uh, but it had just had really disappointing results. And I, I've kind of learned, uh, especially from this, uh, but a few other examples as well. Like it's really dangerous to buy things before results day uh, because you just never know how the market's going to react. Uh, even you know, like Apple for example, their their results uh, were pretty decent and were also decent a few months ago. And yet the market was like, Meh, whatever. Um, but this. Uh, with GAN, you know, the market was expecting a lot better, and, and when it disappointed, it just <laughs> crashed uh, basically. So, I'm down about 25% on this at the moment. I have been down as much as 30%. Uh, I'm going to keep it for another quarter, uh, see what their next quarter results look like, and either uh, ditch it and crystallize the loss. Uh, or, or basically bag hold for a bit longer. Uh, I'm not interested in averaging down in this case just because I, don't, I haven't seen enough of the company yet to make me think that it's stable and long term. Just my decision. Uh, in my core portfolio, so those are the uh, ICES, uh, only three shares are in the red at the moment, which is Mace Rich, AT&T and GSK. Uh, Mace Rich I like as a turnaround play. It's one of my few turnaround stocks uh, left and it's only modestly uh, in the red. Uh, AT&T, I continue to think that it's a bit undervalued to be perfectly honest. So I actually have added uh, some shares in April um uh at, but of course this is march um and uh, gsk i actually regret buying um i think there are just so many better pharma stocks out there basically and with the stock uh, company split coming up um i just think there's a lot of uncertainty so um, we'll see how they pan out okay so this is something i pinched from ppc ian uh a dividend investor on YouTube. Uh, I just really like it. It's kind of beta, but it's uh, attributing arbitrary risk to shares uh, just to kind of see how your portfolio is. I think as long as you do it fairly and honestly, it's a great measure. It's um, really good. Um, my aim here is to have um, sort of between 10 and 20% in 4 plus 5. 10 to 20 percent in one plus two uh, and then the rest in core holdings in in three uh, so that's the plan uh, you can see here as well um, that my um, percentage of portfolio is gradually uh, kind of polarized a little bit so I've got more percentages in level five uh, these are kind of SPACs high risk um, heavily loss making companies etc uh, etc et uh, risk category four is sort of um, maybe unproven or having a bit of a wobble or politically sensitive i think like alibaba for example or um or sentiment i include in that as well just because it's just got a single mine in uh, in in egypt um level three is uh, you know your blue chips uh, everyone knows them sort of j and j jpm uh, level two at the moment i've only got at t in here uh, and then level one uh, is kind of infrastructure companies basically um, and i would say my infrastructure is doing uh, super well um, but we'll start with uh, risk level three um, so risk level three was um, really good i would say uh, slightly overperforming my broader 8.7 uh, percent uh, and really this is a result of um, selling off a lot of my recovery stocks which were sitting in level four uh, moving them into core uh, so you can kind of see there that i've grown sort of 12 percent 11 percent in level three and gone down nine percent in level four so um, that's fine you'll also see as well that level four is, has done quite well um plus 15 percent is my best performing uh, area so whereas uh, going a bit too risky with the SPACs uh, has actually resulted in in uh, negative there although again that's actually GAN also there's uh, pulling that down quite a lot which is in uh, level five um oh I did actually add 20 shares in AT&T even in uh, even in March so um 
so that's good. Um, I wasn't lying earlier. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really bullish on AT&T. And the reason for me adding here, because remember this is before their latest update, which is super stellar. Uh, I actually took some time to read into their wireless business. Uh, I work in telecom billing, uh, so I feel very comfortable with kind of the numbers of um, backend mobile and broadband. Uh, and honestly, I was hugely impressed. There's like massive improvements in all of the kind of propensity to complain and churn, uh, call. Basically, to me, it tells me that operationally AT&T and are really getting their shit together uh, and again although we're talking about March here um, they recently released their, their newest quarter you know and they added 600,000 um, wireless customers so double what analysts are expecting and to me I, I feel like the wireless business alone is worth the better part of $30 uh, slightly overdoing it but you know it just feels like HBO is a bit of a free roll uh, so that's why I basically felt confident enough to add uh, 20 more shares in AT&T uh, under $30 as well so it felt like a bit of a win uh, so and I and I remain bullish on at and I think it's a good decision. Uh, level one is my most improved sector, and really this is because of National Grid. Um, I quite like National Grid. I have a buy price of uh, 960p. I think that's what it's worth, and then less 10%. Uh, so I was prepared to buy it for you know 860, 870, um, and then for some reason the stock just crashed basically to 820. So I just, I just, I was in for like 850, and I was just averaging down like a madman. Uh, so I've now got my average to 830. Feel really good about it. And, you know, the stock currently is uh, over 900 or nine pounds. Uh, so it's kind of, um, you know, uh, better part 10% growth already. Uh, and that's before the yield comes in as well. So I feel really good about about uh, level one. Um, I've also got a pipeline, two pipelines in there, actually. Uh, so I like them as well. And again, that's uh, a lot of the yields from them haven't yet come in. So I, I kind of expect this to improve. I just think I've picked up some good entry points uh, in unloved or un. Uh, underappreciated stock so feeling quite good about the direction of travel to be honest with my portfolio split in terms of risk okay so this is now my uh, sector uh, a lot of these are just taken from the market but I do group them in my own way uh, so significant changes in my segments uh, I have um, significantly reduced my REITs uh, the main reason for that is I just felt like they're all fairly valued and um, other than data center REITs and um, Mace Rich uh, I basically decided to get out of all of them uh, I might I am tempted to jump back into Avalon Bay I sort of am a regretted seller on that uh, I sold that off when the Nasdaq was having a wobble for, for some profit to be fair uh, but I, I do quite like housing REITs uh, in general and I felt like that one was a good one uh, I did pivot nicely into tech as I planned uh, I really want to get my tech between 20 and 25 uh, so this just about edges it in there um, so uh, happy with that movement as well and like I said I think I picked up some reasonable entry points um, in the Nasdaq I mean it's super expensive but I think my best buy was like Apple uh, and I was averaged in between 117 and 119 uh, so um, you know I'm not actually I'm not even an Apple user myself but I can read some numbers and and their, their numbers are great. Uh, so that was probably my best uh, NASDAQ purchase. Um, uh, discretionary as well, I, I mentioned. So um, yeah, th this is, uh, for me, it's like Hollywood Bowl, a lot more UK companies here. Uh, so Hollywood Bowl, uh, Games Workshop, the uh, owner of Warhammer, my goodness, they, they, their margins are just incredible. Uh, Fever Tree as well, I really like, um, is, a, is, a good, is a good call out. Uh, so yeah, and, and healthcare as well, I just think healthcare is a bit um, undervalued, so I've been increasing my stake in uh, Bristol Myers uh, specifically, uh, as well as J&J. &J. Uh, I did reduce my oil, gas and mining, I've gradually just been moving out of um, oil and gas, specifically the super majors. Uh, I, still, I still am relatively bullish in the kind of medium to long term on oil and gas, I don't think it's going anywhere for the next 30 years, uh, which is fine for my time horizon, uh, it's just instead of the, the kind of majors I've been focusing on midstream uh, just because I think it's um, a better long-term investment basically just my decision um, and yeah broadly speaking I'm, I'm quite happy with this uh, my next plan is to focus a bit more on healthcare uh, and yeah just continue to add to my Bristol Myers stake uh, around the low 60s which is uh, I think a bit of a bargain I'm kind of buying Bristol Myers uh, below 65 dollars uh, so yeah that, that's my next focus I would say Okay, so dividends. Um, so there's been a big jump in dividends uh, for March. And again, you'll have to forgive me because I've touched on April here as well, um, just because I didn't save it in time before it's uh, the live dynamic spreadsheet updated. Um, but yeah, uh, March was fantastic, but £290 of that is from Tesco. So really it's more like £90 dividend, I would say. Uh, the other thing that's worth noting as well, and what the table on the right um, indicates is that 
Um, I've sold out of a lot of these stocks, as, as I mentioned, I had like huge turnover in, in March, and uh, so a lot of these divvies I won't be getting again. Uh, energy transfer there and Enbridge I got out of just because I thought Kinder Morgan was a better company. Uh, you'll see there as well lots of REITs, lots of utilities, um, and, and uh, just decided to change strategy. Uh, as a result of that strategy move, I really moved from kind of more of a dividend heavy portfolio, which was um, blended yield um, of 4.2%. Uh, to a much more balanced portfolio uh, of 3.09%. So considering uh, that's over just a couple of months, uh, quite a significant change. Um, I will also say as well, I've kind of polarized and really started focusing on the reason why I'm buying stocks. So, you know, like I, if I look at, um, for example, um, Games Workshop, uh, they're very regular dividend payers. Like, you know, you basically get what you're given with Games Workshop. Uh, their main focus is growing their business and that's perfectly okay. Uh, you know, they're my, they're my growth stock and my dividend growth stock. Whereas if I'm, if I'm looking for dividend, then I'm looking at kind of mining companies, you know, with like uh, six, seven, ten percent yields, uh, just kind of completely changing uh, the way that I focus on companies. Uh, so, uh, and I think that's a good approach to be honest. It's something I regret not doing sooner. Uh, but again, March was the month to get my uh, my mistakes sorted. So again, cool. I really love receiving dividends. By the way, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, so uh, these are the shares I bought. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide. Just, um, you know, any questions, just give me a comment and I won't take six weeks to reply to it. Uh, but yeah, um, as you can see here on the um, on the uh, consumer goods, on the uh, pharma, um, Broadcom actually, I, I forgot to mention. Um, yeah, I really like Broadcom. I've actually been using it to swing trade a little bit in uh, April, so I won't touch on it too much here. Uh, but I think it's a fine company to own. Uh, if it goes down, I just add shares. If it goes up, I kind of profit take around the 480 mark. Uh, so that's been cool. Um, and yeah, uh, my reasons are here. Um, I did get a little bit excited with the SPAC purchases, as you can probably imagine, those aren't looking particularly good at the moment. Um, and a lot of these still are, are um, recovery, etc. Um, so I guess I still do have more uh, more positions in recovery than I realized here. Uh, but the big movements are all on Johnson & Johnson, uh, Unilever as well. Uh, for Unilever, um, I just felt like, you know, they did have quite disappointing results, but the market just absolutely punished them and I just really overdone. Uh, I'm quite happy picking up uh, Unilever under 40, uh, 400p, 40 pounds. Uh, I know there's a um, an ADR as well, UL, I think, uh, but this is the, uh, the the UK listed one. Um, yeah, Bowl, I mentioned, I really like uh, Bowl. Um, obviously, it's been impacted by COVID. This is just a temp in bowling center, uh, but they have like arcades, restaurants and, and um, golf as well, mini golf. Uh, I just I really love it. I keep finding reasons to buy it. I sort of originally was going to stop at like 500 shares, then I went up to a thousand. Uh, I've currently got uh, 1150, I want to say. I just keep adding to it before I think it goes to the moon. It's a super well run company. Really love it. It's on the FTSE 250. Um, before COVID, they, they just had a short history, um, but it looks good to me. I, I like them a lot. Uh, Microsoft is one of my favorite companies, um, so I just add them. And uh, yeah, National Grid, as I mentioned there, I added to my position. Uh, I couldn't believe when it just went down to like 818, I think it went down to. Uh, so I just jumped in on that. Uh, mining stocks, uh, Everaz there is an iron ore play. I really like that one. Uh, and then I think the rest is uh, small enough that we can uh, gloss over it. Okay, and then shares sold. Uh, some of these feel like I sold them ages ago, looking back on it, but um, uh, uh, yeah, some of these I just got rid of. Uh, Pfizer, similar to um, the GSK I touched on, uh, Pfizer was just a regretted buy to me. Uh, I think it was a good time to buy, because I don't, uh, sorry, sell. Uh, it hasn't really done anything. The results were disappointing, and I decided to jump ship. Uh, Abbott Laboratories, I think it was an okay company actually, but I just was, um, it's a bit unexciting. I couldn't really place it kind of, what did I, what did I really own this stock for? Uh, and therefore I just decided, you know, if I couldn't explain it, then I'll just get rid of it. Uh, General Electric was a free share, I got rid of that. Uh, Diageo was um, similar kind of actually, I think Diageo is a good company. It's kind of a play on recovery, but of course they sell to supermarkets and therefore to people. Um, yeah, I just felt like my money could be better used uh, elsewhere, so I decided to, that it wasn't core uh, and decided to sell it. Uh, and then I also got out of an S&P fund uh, as well, just because, uh, I mean, I'm a bit uninspired by ETFs. I find them very boring, um, I, even though they might not be good uh, in the long term financially. Uh, and I just decided to free up some funds as well. So um, that was the rationale. I actually thought I sold a bit more. Uh, that must happen in, uh, in April. 
So, okay, uh, that wraps up my portfolio from the end of March 2021. It is a little bit dated now, uh, but I still wanted to do this video to keep consistent. Uh, portfolio passed 50,000 for the first time, which is a really good, uh, nice number. Can't wait for 100,000, by the way. Um, yeah, was, I'm really happy with March, like I say, um, some great capital growth. Uh, fixing a lot of mistakes and was quite ruthless and took advantage of most opportunity or well, a lot of opportunities uh, so I just felt really confident and uh, yeah we'll see uh, anyway uh, thank you very much for that walkthrough uh, I've been the boss hog and good luck with your investing